there guys. So this week I wanted to go over a couple stones that I would recommend as your first stones. Now this is a great video for anybody who is starting their crystal collection or just wants to know some good basic stones to have in their collection. I've been thinking about doing this video for a while but I just didn't feel like it was the right time and I wanted to have at least four that I could recommend to you. So I did pick out four crystals that I feel like would be great for an overall basic starter place for anybody collecting crystals or anybody who doesn't have these in their collection yet. Go ahead and add these crystals because they are freaking amazing. So the first stone that I want to mention is black tourmaline or squirrel and this is a great great stone. It's one of my favorites. As a starseed I find it really hard to ground and this stone helps me ground and it helps me stay calm. It helps me with a lot of things and I highly recommend this to almost everybody that I meet because it's such a great stone to have. It's definitely a basic for me and I don't know what I would do without it. It's great for protection, grounding, de-stressing, calming obsessive behavior, letting go of self-doubt, bringing in happiness into your life, and having a positive attitude in negative situations. And it's mainly associated with the root chakra, which if you're familiar with the chakra system, you'll know that the root chakra is kind of related to fear and stuff like that and stability. And so this is a great crystal to have because you want to have that base good foundation going in your chakra system. The second stone that I would recommend is called selenite or selenite, depending on how you pronounce it. I pronounce it selenite just because I heard that it's named after the goddess Selene, the moon goddess. So I always say Selenite, but if you say Selenite, it's not necessarily wrong. It's just how you say it. And it can be white or orange depending on what kind you're getting, or it can come in the form of desert rose Selenite. And desert rose kind of looks like a uh, what you think it looks like. It kind of looks like a rose, but it's really good for business and stuff like that. But it does have those selenite properties in it. But the reason why I'm not really going into that is because I feel like it's different than the orange and the white selenite. And specifically, I'm going into the white selenite because that's what I connect with the most. And I feel that people can benefit from the most. But orange selenite is just as good. So make sure you pick out the one that you feel most called to use. So the white selenite helps with connecting to the divine mind and angelic realm, cleansing the aura of negative energy buildup, and it helps open up to abilities that have been dormant from past lives and can raise one's vibration really quickly. And I know that a lot of people on my channel are looking to expand their abilities and looking to kind of clear negativity and stuff like that from their lives. So both black tourmaline and selenite are two major stones that I recommend you have because Selenite is going to help you with meditation and raising your vibration, which is what you need to do really in order to really connect with the angelic realm or the spirit guides and things like that. It's not that you can't connect to them on a lower vibration. It's just a lot more difficult and harder. And when you're at a higher vibration, your abilities just kind of bloom. They just happen and it makes it so much easier to expand them. I can't even tell you. So I highly recommend having selenite slash selenite in your collection if you don't already. I do want to mention that selenite is water soluble, which means it will melt in water. So try your best to not have it sitting in water. If it does get a little wet, like let's say it gets rained on or goes through the washer like mine did, then don't worry. Just take it out and air dry it as quickly as possible. You can't soak these. Um, as a cleansing method. So just so you know and just so you're aware. Numite is another stone that I recommend to a lot of people now because it's kind of still new to me, but this stone is freaking amazing. It is just as grounding as black tourmaline for me, but it has different properties just slightly and it will do different things. So Numite looks a lot like black granite and it kind of has flux of light in it and it helps with grounding and protection against negative sorcery and magical forces, which a lot of people are worried about nowadays. They're really worried about, you know, having hexes or stuff like that on them. If you're worried about that, 
Numite is a great stone to have. It also accelerates growth of magical abilities. So if you're looking into witchcraft or sorcery or anything like that, or even just expanding your abilities in general, this is a great stone to have. It's also connected with the earth star chakra, which is the chakra below your feet chakras. And this is a great chakra to connect to if you really want to ground yourself. And so that's why I think I find it so grounding, but it's a great stone to have. And it also is great with connecting to elemental forces. So if, you're, if you wanna work with elementals, which I have been doing recently, I highly recommend this stone. It's really, really great to have. And it's also great for shadow work. I, I can't really explain shadow work that well, so I recommend you Google it. And I'll try my best to put a link in the description down below that explains shadow work, but it's something that everybody should be doing. Shadow work is so beneficial for everyone. If you wanna know more about it, I'll put a link down in the description below if I find one and it also will bring up past life karma that needs to be released and so that you can work through it and this is a great thing to do because so many people are like you know why can't I find a boyfriend why can't I stop being in relationships that are bad for me and a lot of people don't re realize that a lot of times that happens as a past life reoccurrence because we haven't learned from a a past life we experienced with that in it so we have it happen again so we can learn from it but we don't realize that it's a lesson and so this stone kind of helps us bring that stuff up get through the gunk clear it out and just move on the last stone that I recommend is amethyst and I know that so many people know about amethyst so I'm gonna go over this really quickly because I don't want to spend a whole lot of time here just because so many people are so acquainted with this stone but it's really good for calming the emotions spiritual work assisting with meditation developing psychic abilities and is connected to the third eye crown and soul and etheric chakras so this is a great great basic stone to have because it's really going to help you calm and center and kind of really connect to the spiritual part of you and really work through that stuff and help you to connect with it better. Now you notice that when I went through these stones I didn't really connect, I didn't really include a lot of stones that go over every single chakra and that's because I feel like it's good to have the sandwich effect at first. You want something that's going to ground you and you want something that's going to lift you up. So you've got to have that yin and yang, that balance there that you can work with and then kind of fill in the rest. So if you want to find stones that are really going to help you with each and every chakra, you can definitely Google good stones for the third eye, good stones for the crown chakra, good stones for the throat chakra, all kinds of chakras like that. And a lot of sites have a lot of lists of different stones that you can use to help the, with those specific chakras. But I felt like I would want to mention, you know, having the really top ones and the really bottom ones, just centered and balanced. And that way you can kind of fill in the rest. Another stone that I know people are going to mention is quartz. And the reason why I didn't recommend this, and this is a personal thing, I don't think that quartz is a bad stone. It's just not one that I recommend for people right away, simply because quartz, I find, can really just act like a sponge and always need cleansing. And it's not that none of the, all of these stones don't need cleansing, but it's just hard to keep it clean enough to constantly be using it. And it really needs a lot of tension on that front. But it's, that is simply a personal preference. Um, and that's why I want to mention it is because if you feel comfortable with quartz, I totally understand that. I work with quartz on a pretty regular basis now, but in the beginning, I kind of avoided it because I just didn't feel as connected to it. And I think if you don't feel connected to a stone, don't choose it. Another thing I know people are going to ask is how do I choose what stone to get? And I highly recommend, if you can, going to a rock store in your area or somewhere that sells stones so that you can really feel them out and feel their energy and feel which one connects to you most. I've been told many, many times, and I do agree with this, that the first stone that you're drawn to is your stone. And many times I've picked up two stones and I've picked up one first, but I wanted to make sure that it was the one and it always seems to be the one that I pick up first. I've also heard that it's a good idea to pick it up with your non-dominant hand that works best is what I've heard. But I don't know how accurate that is, but it's also, you know, something worth a try. But once again, everybody has different opinions and everybody has different ways of doing things and that's totally fine. So if you go to a rock store 
try to figure out which stone calls to you. A lot of times I'll feel drawn to a stone and then I'll look up the meaning on Google on my phone and I'll understand more why I'm drawn to that stone. But I do recommend having the black tourmaline, the numite, the selenite, and the amethyst in your collection already before you expand out, but that's also a personal preference. So take this with a grain of salt or just soak it all in if you totally agree, but it's all personal preference and there's no right or wrong way to do it so just go with your gut and go with your intuition and I'm sure it will all turn out the way it's supposed to so don't worry about it too much and I hope this video was helpful if it was please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos from me if you do have any questions you can go ahead and leave it in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them once again if you would like to get a private reading with me or buy crystals from me you can go to my Etsy store or my website down in the description box below I have the links and if you want to find me on social media go ahead and check the links down below because I definitely have my usernames and everything there go ahead and check Check me out on Periscope as well. I'm on there a lot doing some readings and talking to people and hanging out. And I hope you guys all have a great week and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!